All right. Well, the moment I've been waiting for has finally arrived. I'm here with a good friend of mine, Justin. And uh, we'd like to welcome you to the show. This Can Make Us Famous podcast. This is the very first episode. And uh, I've been talking about doing this for a long time. And uh, we finally decided to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, here we are. And uh, we just ask you to be patient with us because it is our first episode, technically. I did a uh, test run yesterday with uh, my stepfather-in-law, which uh, I'm going to try uh, to edit. I'm already clicking on another video as you say that. So uh. Whatever. <laughs> but uh, well, yeah, you're listening to This Can Make Us Famous podcast, and we're going to go ahead and just Hello. dive right into it. So That was our awkward silence for the show so moving on from that uh today's topics are yeah do you think we should try the intro again or is it kind of weak mm. i don't know you know you can just jump right into it with nothing at all it seems to be uh the trend it's true but we have to have something mm -hmm. like even something. a graphic the graphic <clears throat> but uh an awkward dance <laughs> maybe <laughs> well man so much craziness going on in the mm. world right now. It's impossible to not talk about it. So everybody's v very well aware. Sorry, man. I ate a bunch of Chipotle and it's... <laughs> While you're thinking about that, I'm going to move my mug to the other, more to the center. Is that okay? That's fine. Just kind of, you know? Oh, close to the laptop. So we'll get more viewers. Accidentally. Yeah. See, I'm thinking we'll get more viewers with the mug right here. Right there. With the mug over here. Yeah, just a thought. I agree. No, uh, yeah. So this whole COVID nineteen thing is just getting crazy. There's all kinds of articles going around the internet. You just don't, you don't know what to believe really mm -hmm. anymore. It's like someone's telling you this, and this is going on. This that's going on, and it. Well, you got to listen to the professionals, and it just seems like the professionals are contradicting one another. Yeah, <laughs> professional idiots. Yeah. Well. It's uh, all I know is I'm getting tired of it, as I'm sure most of the world is. Um, it's getting really old, um, but it seems like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I feel like we're kind of moving out of all this. So, I mean, I haven't really noticed other than going to grocery stores um, much of a difference. I mean, people are still going to the parks. Uh, social distancing is... I don't know, not really... Six feet at all times. Yeah, no, it's not. So um, I kind of feel like everything's like super over-exaggerated, but that's my opinion. I'm not a professional, even though the professionals are not very professional-like, <laughs> or so it seems. But anyways, uh. nobody wants to talk about COVID-19. It's a, It's like in the news... You hear it every day, you turn on the TV, get on social media, whatever. So we're going to just move on and segue from... Uh, yeah. Every time you turn on the TV and the radio, well, no one listens to the radio anymore, but... <laughs> There's one guy on here like, yeah, I do, man. I listen to AM. <laughs> do you listen to AM? Have you ever listened to AM radio? Um, uh, what is that? <laughs> well you know when you accidentally like uh oh that's like the special like is that like ham radio yeah it's like no. just people talking and um mm -hmm. it's just kind of interesting a lot of preachers on there mono it's all yeah. mono kind of kind of boring disease kind of boring just like us we're super boring yeah. monotone yeah nobody wants to listen to us no so yeah i mean dude i uh so today I, I have to tell you about how my day went. Um, I went, uh, I, I'm i sorry to say this, but I did not practice social distancing, so I'm a very bad citizen. And uh, One foot. And we're actually, we're not yeah, right we're, now. We're rebels. Yeah, well, oh well. Um, no, I was uh, playing this game uh, with a group of friends at a tennis court right by our house, and um, it's called Venice. It's volleyball and tennis mixed together. Um, so basically how the game goes, 
Well, let me tell you a little bit about the history of the game. It, um, I, from what I hear, a high school coach in Lee Summit, Missouri, started this mm-hmm. game years ago, and people have just been playing it in that area in Lee Summit. And uh, well, I have some friends that are from Lee Summit, and they introduced us to it. And uh, man, I got to tell you what. That game is one of the most addicting games I've ever played in my life. It's so much fun. I'm not really an athletic person. I don't like to run, but playing this game was just, I mean, we went on for like two or three hours. We played, no, it was probably about three hours, played about eight games. Yeah, tell, tell them about the hand. Oh, and then the hand. Um, so I was being super competitive and the ball, we the ball you got is like a big uh, kickball, like a big giant red rubber kickball, like from grade school. Yeah, with the little yeah, the big ones that you on got it. blasted dead on in the face, mm-hmm. and it hurt so bad. Um, red mark tattoo. Yes, and so, anyways, what happened was, uh, I was going, I was going in, running up to the net, trying to get it before it hit, um, so we could score, and I ran really fast. And my finger, my middle finger, ironically. Uh, <laughs> this is really just a cover story. Uh, yeah. No, my middle finger hit the net and it got wrapped in the net as I was going over. And I think it pulled my my finger out of socket or something. It felt like I can't bend it. I mean, this is actually better than earlier, but it's swollen really bad. You can't see it from the camera, but it's really bad, like swollen and it hurts. So... Um, probably didn't break it, but so you experienced some pain. I experienced right. some pain, if you but we checks won. Out to Jason McCormick, the uh, stimulus box, checks that you just received in care of hand recovery. Yes, please. I well, I don't like going to the doctor, so I I kind of like to just wait things out unless it's serious. Mm-hmm. I've broken my wrist before, and that sucked. I mean, when it first happened, it. I just was in shock, I guess. My ri- my hand was like sideways. Like you knew it was totally broken. It was crazy. Broke. And uh, I guess one of the main bones in your arm, that's what snapped. And uh, yeah, so, but what hurt worse than that was... <laughs> but wait, there's more. No, it's it has to do with that. So when I broke it, they had to put a cast on past my elbow. So I was forced to hold my arm like this for like, I don't know, three months. Mm-hmm. And when they took it off, they went to do an x-ray and they went to stretch my arm out. And that hurt so bad. Oh, yeah, because your muscles were all... Yeah, I mean, it was tight. Yeah. My elbow hadn't moved and it well, was brutal. Watch, you'll probably end up going to the hospital and they're like, well, it'll be exactly $1,200, sir. Oh, my God. Well, we just went through that with my uh, wife. She was in that uh, accident where this uh, person, I guess they swapped plates with somebody that had a similar car to theirs. And instead of registering theirs, this lady swapped the plates. And then when the cop went to pull her over, they figured out that it was swap plates. So she took off on a high speed chase and I'm, it's crazy. So I'm sitting down burning some brush in my backyard with my son. Naturally. And I hear helicopters above and I was like, man, this is kind of weird. They're definitely chasing somebody. And little did I know, <laughs> what could go wrong? That high speed chase ended when my wife was driving my work van that I paid cash for, and uh, first like car that I ever paid cash for. I didn't owe anything, and uh, that person actually slammed in uh, to my my van, and that's how this high speed chase ended. And so we had to fight with the insurance company to give us a good amount of money and uh the hospital bill for i kid you not dude we went in there all they did was ask her a few questions took a very fast x-ray we were out in like 30 minutes yeah and the bill was like 3200 dollars. i couldn't believe it dude made me sick to my stomach i mean the insurance covered two thousand of it but um it's kind of i don't understand that like why when they, it wasn't a major procedure. I mean, it was just us walking in the door. She, they asked some questions and took a x-ray. I mean, they've been doing x-rays for a long time. 
So it's yes, nothing years. complicated. So that'll be thirty-two hundred dollars. Thirty-two hundred dollars. That's uh, roughly three stimulus checks. I feel like our medical systems is kind of overpriced. It's crazy, man. But yeah, you, I think you're the first person to ever say that. <laughs> I might be. You're hearing it for the first time here on the show. But I do have to say it. I would assume that the the expenses of like like why it's so expensive to go to the emergency room and, and to uh, have medications and stuff is because um, just to get a drug out on the market, it costs a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact, because I'm going to share with you guys something that's very personal. You buy all your drugs from the Philippines? I buy all my drugs from the... How'd you know that? Because I shop in Thailand. <laughs> I'm your dealer, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, well. No, uh, so... I do, on the side, I've been doing this for a long time, I do medical research studies, and uh, I've been doing it for, I don't know, since 2012, 13, something like that. But to clarify, you uh, don't per se dissect the individuals in the research studies. No, 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 no. I, I'm a human guinea pig. Study. So chances are the medication that you take to survive... Has been through your it, entire body I've, system. Yeah, I was the guinea pig. Um, I get a lot of hate for it, as you would imagine. I got a, quite a few family members that uh, despise it. I got, I don't know, most of my friends, and maybe a couple of them don't care at all, but I got a lot of friends that just don't care. And then I got friends that hmm. think it's crazy, and uh, why am I doing it? <laughs> but without you doing this, I always have to shop in the Philippines. Yeah, and that's exactly why I do it, because of you. Uh, no. So basically if you're not familiar with it, people that do medical studies, uh, they can make thousands of dollars in a study. I actually just did one, uh, for 19 days I was gone, which was basically the entire, like when the quarantine literally, like right before the quarantine happened, I, um, I actually checked into the study mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden the quarantine happened. So I spent 19 days in this facility and the irony I wasn't able to leave. Like you had to stay inside. So I didn't go outside for nine, 20 days, actually. I didn't go home until the 20th day, but it was, uh, so they, they get, they dose you. Um, and, and then you just stay in and they do blood draws and check your vitals and, and stuff. And then when you're done with your stay, they, uh, they load some money on your card. Hmm. So I have a quick question about that. Yeah. Does anybody want to see what's on the other side of this coffee mug? <laughs> Whatever. Ten likes. Ten yeah, likes. Ten, ten likes. Wait. No, I I'm sure they want to know about how to make thousands of dollars doing medical yes. studies. Let me get my... While you're doing that, Canine Crumpets brought to you by... <laughs> yes. This, this is a company, actually, that is uh, part of Jason's family that makes dog treats. They're actually quite tasty. So. And you will know that. Because of the first episode, which is episode zero, the test run with Charlie. With Charlie. We did a plug for that. So, Oh. I will say this, though. That first or episode zero that I did, guys, I worked so hard on that and spent hours editing and trying to match up the audio. And unfortunately... Dave, cue the violin. <laughs> Unfortunately, I uh yeah, it was <laughs> there, we go. there we go. Yeah, we have to have this. Uh it after it was rendering, it said it, this laptop's not good for editing, by the way. It would take six hours to render, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. After two hours, it was at 10%, and then all of a sudden it crashed. And everything I did was done. I mean it wasn't Never before have it I was made gone. a word render this much. And I was ticked. So it's unfortunate, but uh, it is what it is. So here we are with the official, I guess we could call this the official episode one. I mean, mm -hmm. pretty much they're all going to be test runs until we do one really good one, then it's official. Um, episode numbering, you know, I since I got spoiled on comic books as a child, Okay, actually, I was in college, but I always see episode numbering in relation to like 
what I learned from comics where, you know, the first is obviously worth the most. The first nine or ten or, you know, two through ten is the most important after that. And then sometimes they'll be in the hundreds and they go back and do a number zero. Really? It was like a prequel. Yeah, this is what happened. So is it kind of like those ridiculous uh, Taken movies? You know how Liam Neeson, they're just like Taken 1, there's Taken 2, Taken 3. It's going to be like Taken again. (laughs) All right, this time, this is the last time she's going to be taken. Take me harder. (laughs) Please take me. Take me. (laughs) Take me somewhere, part five. Take into the re- take into the restroom. Dad gum it, we got taken again. Take part into the twelve. Home. Drink. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so like Liam Neeson's in a nursing home and then he gets taken out. <laughs> taken to the bathroom. Taken to the bathroom. No, that's kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know. I, I actually really enjoyed those um uh taken movies. They were pretty crazy and it actually it Mm -hmm. opens up opens you up to a world that you didn't really think about existing you know what i like about the taken movies or at least i really just admit it usually the first movie is the best in any series um it's hard not to be because that's what your brain gets introduced to but the thing i liked about the first taken movie is it kind of made the point hey idiot don't let your daughter go to europe with just a friend Right, it's true. I mean, how many parents are kind of just, oh yeah, no, sure, yeah. off to Paris. What could go wrong? <laughs> well, now you know. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, red flags in that. I mean, the fact that they found this random creepy dude. Mm-hmm. I guess they thought you know he was a good looking guy and they could trust him. Of course, he's attractive. Yeah, that that guy. always worked well for people. You just find someone that's good looking and oh, they're just perfectly trustworthy. Mm-hmm. And then before you know it, you're taken again and again and again and again, part 1,200. Maybe that's why some of the American public doesn't trust Donald Trump. Uh, yeah, well, there's a lot of people that hate him. Politics, man, you know, I'll tell you what. It don't matter who a leader is or, I mean, of anything, especially a country, someone's going to hate him. Mm-hmm. So just like this podcast, for example... Yeah, we'll get some likes. It. We'll get some likes, and we'll probably get you know a bunch of dislikes. It wouldn't be fun without dislikes. Matter of fact, I found some of the most influential, amazing podcasters or even YouTube stars, and they got dislikes. Mm-hmm. I'm like, these guys are awesome. I've seen videos, dude, where it's like a child dying <laughs> of cancer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I that's bad. I just laughed. When you I said can't. I know that cancer. is messed up. No, I mean it's like a kid dying of cancer, and they that. had like one last wish to see. You know, their yeah, and it's like and ten dislikes. dislikes. Like what? <laughs> Who would do that? Like what kind of monster? If you're watching this and you did that, how dare you? It's probably some kids in school that didn't like him. It's crazy, man. You know, I don't. Johnny was a jerk until he got cancer. Now everyone likes him. Yeah, I don't understand. People are crazy. So I know going into this that um, you're not gonna. But are we? Wait, are we recording? Mm-hmm. The whole the whole time we've been. Yeah, we've been recording. Oh my god! Why don't you tell me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I'm gonna be more professional. Okay, that's it. The cup's going back around. <sighs> We're drinking straight black coffee because there's no other way to drink it. Because I like my. Your white Should cup. No. So, anyways, we're very godly men. We love Jesus. Um, you love Jesus, no, don't yeah, you? No, <laughs> it's, it's laughing. <laughs> we, we do. We uh, actually do. That's not a joke. We yeah, love Jesus. I was just thinking of the worst. I like my coffee, like my <laughs> jokes. While well, you said we're godly people. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so now that the cat's out of the bag, I've got to explain the funniest version of that ever heard was told to me by my pastor behind me in coffee line one sunday like 10 years ago where he's like i like my coffee like my women hot and trapped inside a small metal container oh my gosh your pastor said that yeah and he had children what guys i don't know what kind of pastor that is or what church he pastors but non-denominational Dear God, that is messed up, mm-hmm. and we do not condone mm-hmm. 
that. He had a good teaching gift, though. He did. Really? Still does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that yeah. uh, sounds like it. But, uh, anywho, just so much stuff to cover. I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know how to hold my hands on a podcast. I they go here, kind of down here. Yeah, <laughs> like, this. like uh, what is that? Uh, the Smile ballad of the Ricky time. Bobby, the Talladega Nights. He's like, I don't know what to do with my hands. I, I just don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> slowly I can't control them. They're slowly like, rising up. I'm not sure. I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. Uh, we get a hand tattoo. Oh, dude, that'd be really tight. Yeah. It's like says podcast on it. <laughs> yeah. With like a heart and an arrow. Mom. Mom, yeah. Momcast. Momcast. It'd be a great name for there a podcast. You go. And we're mothers. we're not even moms. Not what yet. if we had one called Momcast? It's just two guys that have children and that's it. Or popcast. Daddy cast. Casting dads. Yeah. I don't I I don't know, that's pretty cool. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Very interesting. So, hmm. all right. Um, wow, that's making a we've little talked about buzzing nothing noise. for a while. And so, next item on, looks like on our agenda, is the coronavirus. <laughs> no, we're not going into that. <laughs> so boring. Been there, done that. No, I, I'm trying to uh, figure out how to edit this stuff. Man, I hear like this weird buzzing. Do you hear it? No, it's probably just your ears. I wonder if it's, uh, huh, like, yeah, it's like whenever I talk, it makes a buzzing noise. Maybe it's just my headphones or is it the microphone cable? Hmm. Anyways, Good I'm times. sure people don't want to hear about that. Good times. Yeah. Um. So, anyways, moving on from that. Uh, yeah, so I've been bored for a while. Uh, <laughs> Being trapped. I mean, when uh, you're trapped yeah. inside all day with nothing to do, it's you go crazy and you start a podcast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so I quit a job to take another job. Uh, I felt like I was being led to this other job. And I got all my documentation, had to pass some tests and whatnot. And then right before I started, while I was waiting for the like FBI fingerprint thing to process and pass, and that kept taking, it took like a week at this point, the coronavirus hit and they stopped. <laughs> they did a hiring freeze. The business I was going for, that I was applying for actually is a, considered an essential business, but I mean, since there was hardly any customers left because everyone was staying home. Then. Mm. So I got trapped in between. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. lame. But, you know, there's a lot of people that were inconvenienced like that. For example, my wife, she just literally got her real estate license. And immediately after that, um, she, after the, she got a real estate license, that's when everything just shut down. I mean, people are still buying and selling homes, but it's not how it was before. Glad she's not selling fake estate. Yeah. Real estate only. Oh, yeah? Guaranteed. Do I have that? Mm -hmm. There you go. Beautiful. That was awesome, man. Yeah, they, uh, they really all abruptly stopped clapping and cheering at the same time. That was, that was odd. I trained them They're well. Really, yeah. Train them well, just really on target there. So, anyways, I was wanting to do like a challenge on the show, like twelve year olds do. Yeah, got to got to do a challenge. I don't know. We're like what twenty twenty five minutes in. Yeah, we got to do a challenge, man. What can we do? Blind blindfold me, and I taste crayons and try to tell you what color they are. Ooh, uh, wax, <laughs> wax. Blue wax. wax. Red wax. Blue red. Dude, I used to eat. Do you ever question some of those colors in the box of like 128,000 Crayola box? It had the little sharpener on the side. Mm -hmm. And like, there's more colors than I'm ever really going to use. But how in the world can you have yellow green and green yellow? You know what I mean? Mm. That is one of the mysteries of the world that we'll never know. <laughs> How many shades of blue can there really be? 
All I know is there's 50 shades of gray. How many shades of blue does a child need? You didn't get that. I've never seen that. That was movie. hilarious. And I'm you a, didn't laugh. I'm a godly man. <laughs> I'm a godly man. I haven't seen 50 shades of there's gray. There's 50 shades of gray. Somebody laughed. <laughs> and again, the abrupt stop. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> It's a sharp, it's a rough audience. They, they, get, <laughs> like, they have ADD. Yeah, they get bored like, quick. Make them laugh. It's like Kim Jong Un's. <laughs> it's like Kim Jong Un's audience. They all clap and cheer for him, and he's just like. Sit. Oh, this, they all stop right. at once. It's like the movie The Dictator. If oh gosh, if you haven't seen this, well, if you're a godly person, don't watch it. But if you can handle it, it's great. But there's all these scenes where he's just. Yeah. Like he's on the stairs with someone. I won't give the whole thing away. Don't worry. He's on the stairs and he's trying, you know, when you're trying to go down the stairs and somebody's coming up on the same side. Yeah. And then you go over to the left and they go over to their right. And so yeah. you're kind of doing this at the same time. And so that happens. So it's just funny because it's playing out something ordinary in life that's frustrating. And uh, the guy's like all scared because he's doing it to the dictator. And he's like, yeah. I'm so sorry, so sorry. And the dictator's like, no, no, no problem. It's just 50% of my problem, too. And he's like, okay. And as soon as he walks by, the dictator's all, and tells his guys, you know, off with his head. <laughs> Kill him. Yes. <laughs> Man, that guy's got to go, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Kim Jong-un, if you're watching this. Well, you know. But Actually, I don't want him to go because I don't want him to kill me. Uh, I we, we really think about it. Maybe I don't think he's as much of a threat as China is. <laughs> All of a sudden, like this bomb just falls on our house. <laughs> it's like <laughs> he's not a threat at all. Uh, no, he's not a th- <laughs> that fire all around the neighborhood. No, he's no threat compared to China. I mean, it's kind of like I get the feeling like Trump could go over there and just kind of, you know. Drop a few swimsuit illustrated magazines on his lap and North Kim Korea. would be his boy. <laughs> you know? North Korea. It's like, hey, son. I love the Let me way. tell you the ropes here. China, okay. <laughs> it's pretty good. I'm going to tell you something. Listen, everybody. China. <laughs> China. He should do that in his uh, State of the Union address. It's like, just <laughs> goes up there like, <clears throat> China. Okay. China. He should, he and that's should work it. in. China. Every five words, just to just to annoy the left. Ladies and gentlemen, China. I just every time you say that, Huge. I see I see C H Y space N A. China. China. Okay, I'm telling you, you don't agree, but I know you do agree. Uh, thank you for uh, the Ming Dynasty, the nice vases, very good, very good. Um, but uh, the Listen. sickness, the COVID, not so good. China's going to pay. Listen, they're going to pay. They're going to pay big time, okay? Big league. They're going to pay big league. Big league. I mean, huge. I don't want to make fun of President Trump. I... I want to put his head on the top of a pencil and then do that and see if the hair all flies out. Like, oh, yeah. Like those uh, trolls. And we're not saying we... Don't like him at all, and we're not saying we do. Where are we? There are some things he gets done. Yeah. Like um, a list of about 35 items that no one else could do until he took office, yet he's a terrible person. <laughs> uh, I mean, people, <laughs> it's just, I mean, the same thing happened, though, with, you know, when Obama was in office. For one, people were very certain that he was the Antichrist and mm. uh, he was going to be the end of the world. And, he wasn't the end of the world. People and he thought wasn't. Ronald Reagan was the Antichrist. Yeah, and, and Ronald what, Reagan, dude. He's super cool. You know what their proof was? Back. Because he had six letters in all three names. Ronald, Wilson, Reagan. Yeah. That's a what conspiracy. What more evidence do you need? That's a, that's a conspiracy. If I ever heard one. Yeah, my coffee's getting cold. Uh, well, I wish we had... You know what we should do is get like a, uh, a coffee... Uh, like little spout thing, we could just be like. Tsh. That's a great idea. That's a great show idea. Just a chain. It's a chain hanging here the whole time. Yeah. One hundred likes, and I pull the chain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should. Why not? We could do anything we want. Anything at all. Anything. Be judged mercilessly by millions of fans. 
Oh, the vast the audience world. out there Ten. listening to us right now. A basement of 10-year-olds. No, I do need to uh, probably hear, once I figure out and get a couple episodes out there, I want to, um, I want to actually figure out the different segments and, you know, plan the show out a little better. But right now we're just going to let it be more organic. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You know, all natural. We're going to read the comments and, uh, see what the audience thinks. And if they're good comments, we will comment back. Wow, dude. If they're not good comments, then we will read them on the next episode and chastise those people live. Yep. Uh, In a German accent. Well, we're doing this live, however it's being recorded. Right, that's true. But technically, right now it's live. Right now. It's live. Yeah. Now it's live. Exactly. Right now it's live to us. It's live to us. Like right now, that GoPro is our audience. Right now it's new to you, unless you're not watching it for the first time. Um, you know, how many people of all the... It doesn't calculate the hits... That you watch it the second, third, fourth, fifth to infinity times. It only calculates the first hit, and it reads it from I think the IP address. You know when it's uh, so. oh when people click on the video. So in other words, why am I saying all these strange things? Because you don't know how much of your audience are repeat watchers of the same video, or how many are just watching it for the first time. Oh, you're talking about the algorithms and like like people clicking on the videos and how yeah. many? Because mm -hmm. I mean, when I first started Exciting. doing uh, nice. YouTube stuff. I was thinking, well, all I have to do is just go on my own video and just keep <laughs> clicking. I think that used to work like 10 uh, probably, years ago. Probably, probably when it first started, but that obviously doesn't work. But mm -hmm. but you know what? That reminds me. Uh, so I had, uh, I started my first uh, YouTube adventure was uh, starting a product review uh, business with my wife and we reviewed different products. and. Yeah, lifestyle product review, that's what it was called. And we did a couple episodes and it was it was all right. I think if I would have kept going with it, I probably could have done something with it. But I bet you guys didn't know that this guy over here has a YouTube channel that Oh me? Yeah. Yeah. He calls himself Justin Ocean. And uh he he's in a, a what would you call yourself? A DJ? <laughs> Or a, uh, yes, uh, it's a new term that I made up. Uh, it's abbreviation for disc jockey. You've disc probably jockey. never heard it before. But, uh, you know, it's actually a topic of debate. Uh, you don't see the term DJ much anymore unless someone's actually live at a party DJing. But for a l the longest time, you had DJ producers that would go by the moniker DJ and then fill mm. in the blank. And then somewhere around probably 2005 or so, it kind of started switching to just the name of the artist. Like, even if they were previously, for example, um, Armin Van Buren, Christopher Lawrence, Tiesto. Tiesto is a good one to stop on because almost everyone's heard that name. Uh, it was DJ okay. Tiesto. And uh, I know I'm, I'm, the women are all falling asleep right now. Uh, <laughs> Was, oh, DJ Tiesto. Wow. <laughs> I just woke up. This guy's boring, but I heard Tiesto. He went by DJ Tiesto, then he just switched to Tiesto because EDM blew up so much. You could just you could do that. And the shorter name that you can get by with, usually the more it's focused into the brain. So but mm -hmm. I also like having DJ out in front because it kind of tells everyone, you know, this is music with a beat. Right. And you're really big in the EDM scene. Mm -hmm. Why don't you explain to the audience about the EDM scene and how, like, how you have taken an approach on it? Okay. Uh, the EDM scene is a scene about EDM uh, that. I've What's the taken initials an mean? To, um, Electronic Edwardian. Is that what I mean? Dystopian. No. Melancholies. You don't even know. I would imagine it has <laughs> to do does, with electronic disc. It. Okay. Mm -hmm. Music. You got two oh. out of three. Electronic dance music. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's I like, thought you didn't know, and I was like, what a hypocrite. I was just here <laughs> telling people that you love 
quick explanation is, uh, yes, it stands for electronic dance music, and it covers, it's a broad umbrella that covers basically all dance music, even including, Sorry. what was that? Even including hip hop, uh, although that's debatable by some people, but technically it does include hip hop. Uh, so whatever your trap, dubstep, trance house, all variations thereof, it's all under the umbrella of EDM. So you could say EDM, and mean dance music, or you could say house music and mean right. dance music. So how like how did you take a unique approach at it though? Because you you have a channel. It's called Justin Ocean. If you guys want to check out his stuff, that he, I mean, he didn't make the music, but he put all the songs together and EQ'd it. Right. 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 So he took other people's stuff and blended it all together. Hence, disc jockey. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's really good stuff, by the way. But what is your unique approach to it, though? The approach to it is uh, it's a Christian DJ podcast, but it's not Christian music that was originally created to be Christian music, which is probably also going to be like, you know, in a major key and a little boring. I just said that. <laughs> so, okay, basically the story is this. I grew up in dance music, and this was you know, my church, so to speak. I could hear this stuff. When I listen to the right songs, house, trance, whatever, sometimes I would literally feel God. And I was at a Christian conference once, and I had my headphones in, and the worship was going on in the whole arena, but I was listening. I was actually listening to a Christopher Lawrence album, uh, one of his first, uh, Temptation, um, of all the names. <laughs> and it just clicked. I'm like, this works. So... Next step was create a DJ podcast where I go out and tires, tirelessly I find, I hunt down tracks that basically have a like a love lyric message where it's singing to someone, but it doesn't say specifically. But if you didn't know better, you would think it was worship, just the way that it's done. It's like a pure, you know, it's not like Americanized pop or hip hop or baby this baby that it's it's just like more pure uh, but it's got a great beat to it and so i found those and i blend them together uh with you know the techniques the dj uses and you have a continuous uncut mm. one hour of worship and it's called higher power mm. yeah so if you guys want to check out his stuff it's just an ocean in youtube.com and uh the videos are called higher power i've listened to it it's actually really good. I'm I never really got into like the EDM uh scene, but after I listened to his stuff, I was like, dude, and you don't know this, but there's been a couple nights where I've like lay down uh to go to sleep and I put my headphones in and I listened to your uh the higher power and it was I kind of got lost in the like a trans. It's crazy. <laughs> Thanks. And I saw unicorns and it's crazy stuff. Well, you don't know this, but there's a couple nights where I take <laughs> all of your recordings of phone calls where we chatted and just... Like voicemails. Like your voicemails and just listen to them over and over. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> that sounds creepy. That's really creepy. That's where we're going to go ahead and end <laughs> this podcast. Uh, uh, no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, so that's what he does he, um, on the side. Um, you've got, man, you got like, uh, how many, like over 2000 subscribers? Are you like, yeah, three? it's, you know, it's kind of small time still, but it's something it's over 2000 subscribers. I don't know. Pull it up and find out. Um, yeah, let's see. I need to be, I need to be more regular getting the episodes out, but it's, it's been, it's been hard. It's been a struggle. It's kind of been a one man thing the whole time. So, uh, you grew up in a small town and the middle of the country and there's not exactly a lot of, uh, you know. Wow. So he's got 3000, over 3000 subscribers. Look at that. <laughs> well, I'm up to date. Look at that guys. That's so awesome. And his videos have, I don't know. Some of them have over a hundred. It looks like one of them, 62,000. Oh, 127,000 views. And then there's one for 143,000. So at this point, your side project is more popular than mine. <laughs> well, I have started. 
Zero subscribers. Zero views. His wife won't even subscribe. It's terrible. my wife is like, you're a loser, and uh, uh, when it's funny, get a job and make money and pay bills. No, that's uh, wow. Yeah, was, I think that's how Johnny Cash's wife was too, though. You can't do this. This you is can't. You'll job. never. And I'm, we're just joking. My wife did not say that, so uh, that's a joke. She's actually super excited about it. Matter of fact, I'll probably have her on sometime. Uh, as a guest, and she could fill you in about how amazing it is to be married to me and uh, just how fulfilling her life is because I'm her husband. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of subject matter there, mm -hmm. um, mostly good. Uh, I would probably say about 98% good. What, what's 98% good? Everything about me, oh, like being married right. to my wife. Yeah. Right. In what parallel universe is it? Yeah. <laughs> Are we in right now? No, she, <laughs> you just see like a spear going through it. And like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> next episode. Well, here's the divorce papers. Uh, apparently. My, my next Not video is like me crying, like, my wife. Blah, blah. I'd like to dedicate this podcast <laughs> to my wife. Please come back. Please. I have nowhere to live. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's uh, I love being married, man. It's a challenge of a lifetime, but it's great. A lot mm. of good memories. I have a little boy. His name's Judah. Little guy, four years old. He is very hyperactive. Um, yeah, so it's a good kid. Yeah, no, marriage is a challenge. I'm glad to uh, glad to be married too. Yeah. Um, I'm not married. <laughs> I wish I still had that cricket button. Do I have it? <laughs> They're like, um, I don't see a wedding no. ring on this finger. Oh, there we go. Dang it. I need to write this down because I have. Because actually... the colors aren't enough. Well, I can't remember. Like, while I'm talking, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, purple. It's, it's the purple button. Crickets are purple. No, they give you these cards here that you're supposed to be able to write down <laughs> what is what. And we'd like to thank you for uh, viewing Amateur Hour. Yeah. <laughs> No, I love this. I mean, this is the beautiful beginnings, man. We're live, by the way. Yes, we are. I uh, When I started this whole thing with YouTube and doing the podcast, I watched so many videos. Yeah. And the bigger channels that have millions of subscribers, they basically explained it's like, you just got to do it. You got to put the content out there and just keep doing it over and over and mm -hmm. over and over. Don't expect your first episode or your first video to be, you know, amazing and go viral unless you're retarded or you do something. <laughs> Sorry, I can't use the word retarded. Um, um, thank you. No, you yes. know, how people get, the you know, how people word, get famous, yeah. <laughs> famous for doing nothing. Like that girl on Dr. Phil that, uh, all she said was cash me outside. How about dad? That's all she said, dude. And she became mm -hmm. an instant sensation online, a multi millionaire. And I believe she has an, her own like helicopter. I wish. All for three words. Yeah. Cash me out. Wait, is that even. Uh, cash me outside. Yeah, that's. The I, I mean, that's just a lot. That's a <laughs> Four lot. Syllables, I can't even. I mean, cash me out, shy. How about shy? It's you know, it, it makes paying a quarterback of an NFL team thirty million a year much more justifiable now. I feel yeah. I feel better about it. No, I was so mad when I saw that, but I mean, there's people that are like they spent their whole life going to school to educate themselves. They're like freaking nuclear scientists, and mm -hmm. they don't even make as much as that girl. Mm. but it's kind of sad because you see these people that go viral, they become very successful multimillionaires and they didn't do anything at all. And there's people that actually work really hard. There's people out there that are super talented, amazing singers, amazing musicians, mm -hmm. amazing artists, and they're never even heard of. It's and then you capitalism. got people that are famous that can't sing worth a darn. Perils of capitalism. Um, but here's what you have to remember is that 
in other economies like socialism, the poor in capitalism are still richer than the middle class in socialism. So it's mm -hmm. like everybody wins, but it's challenging because you can see so many other people becoming ridiculously wealthy for the stupidest of things. And it's just almost impossible to not get jealous. But if you remember that, hey, I, I mean, think about it. If you're making even just $20,000 a year, you're living in a small house uh, mm -hmm. with you know, a one-bedroom house, you're living with more conveniences and luxuries than the kings of the earth did 200 years ago. Really? Yeah. I mean, just the running water and electricity alone is... Dang. Yeah. By the way, that way... So I feel fortunate. That uh, squeaking is Justin's stomach. Is uh, No, it's the chair. How has it been... That daggum, that chair, it's just, I don't know if you can hear it. Hopefully it doesn't show up in the audio. Yeah, they probably tuned it out like the train going by every five minutes. <laughs> you know? See, you haven't even heard the train, have you? You mean the train wreck of the this train podcast? Every five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> There's no train. Oh, wait, that's the wrong <laughs> one. Ah! That was the hip hop section of our show. Um, no, so we're, I got to get another chair. This could make us famous. Like that? I don't even know what he said, but I like it. This could make us famous. I made that. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, oh, right. The name of our channel. Yeah, yep. I knew that. What's in chocolate? Uh, that's that from the. What's in chocolate? <laughs> I used to have. That's a good one. There we go. That's my favorite. The crickets. The crickets. I need to put some more custom ones on there. Can you juice a cricket? I wonder. Can you juice a cricket? Actually, this has a audio library. Let's Google that. Watch this. Look at this. Hey, Google. Hey, Google. Can I juice a cricket? See? Juice. Yeah. That's Sorry, I'm not sure. Is there a... <laughs> I have a little Google mini thing sound effects let's see here these are all free uh effects that google gives you or not google oh i guess google because they own the world youtube but uh there's a airplane mm -hmm. for those of you that have never heard an airplane before that's an airplane taxi this is an airplane. long aluminum can open Hey, give me some uh, good action sound effects, and we'll do the in a world. Oh, yeah. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, action. What do we got? In a world. See if I can find. I've seen some good YouTube videos that actually take different intros of several movies, and they show you how they're all done the same way for the previews. Let's see if this is. What did I say it's going to be hard to find. In a world. <laughs> No, that's not. That's, I can't do it to that. <laughs> I can't find the. Just give me the, um, you know, give me the White House down music or uh, some Star Wars or something. Anything with Bruce Willis in it. <laughs> you mean like, uh, what's that Christmas movie? Oh, uh, Die Hard. Mm hmm. Wasn't that funny? Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Of all the Christmas movies, it's my favorite. Hi. In a world. In a world. Without the Von Trapp family. <laughs> without your favorite singers. And matching skirts made of drapes. <laughs> the left of man. A world devoid of enjoyable music. One man stood above the ashes. This summer. One man saved the world. That one man. One man drank a cup of coffee. That one man. One man can't stop talking. That one man. Can I get a beat? <laughs> one man. One man. All I can say is one man. <laughs> this summer in the world. Arnold Schwarzenegger stars in one man. <laughs> <laughs> Into the chopper. <laughs> Get 
get out of here. Oh, that's been so over time. I know, but, but it's yeah. still fun. But it's so it's fun. Still like, funny. I enjoyed that very much. We could, uh, we should rename this. This could make us bankrupt. <laughs> this could make us bankrupt. <laughs> yes, very much so. No, I think that's pretty much it. We're at an hour. Mm-hmm. We've covered so many good things. Uh, we achieved very little. Uh, we educated people very little. Um, but hopefully we made you laugh. Wherever you are in your living room, at home, in the bathroom, on the toilet. Mm-hmm. Getting away from the wife, watching us on your smartphone. That's yeah. Little- It'd be a little awkward, but uh, you know, take yeah. it any way I can get it. Yeah. So wherever you are, we want to thank you mm-hmm. for watching, for even lasting as long as you have. And uh, for those very few that made it to the end of the video, formerly his wife and uh, <laughs> your <mother>. girlfriend, <laughs> my mom who's dead. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm having watching. Oh uh, man. No, I'm sure my mom's very proud. Very, very proud. You know what? At least we're doing it. That's Well, all that'll matters. be all the time we have for today. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, uh, I'll tell you what. It's been amazing. Thank you guys for tuning in. And we promise the content will get better and better and better as we do it more and more and more. And hey, if you got any advice, if you got any uh, ideas of what we can do to increase the content of the show, uh, we'd love to hear it. You can comment below. Uh, Just put a link in. Well, we won't put a link in the description, but we will ask for you to comment (laughs) to tell us what you think. Uh, Even if it's lame, that's fine. We'll keep doing it because we can. And we should. We will. Was that good? Did you enjoy that? I just had to downstairs for a bit. Yeah, well. Thank you so much. You You were just watching and listening to This Can Make Us Famous podcast. We're out of here. I need a refill.